So, we want to welcome everyone, first of all, but most especially our guest from all the way from Australia on the very ni last night of her visit to Europe. She's come here to share with us and she's very welcome. I've never met this lady before, but I know her friend, we have a mutual friend who's a very, very nice <coughs> spiritual soul, so we have something in common there. And welcome to the temple. Chandra. Chandra and Arjuna. We're from um, Australia. Very, very pleased to be here. Mm -hmm. um, it's lovely to uh, be in a temple dedicated to the many mothers. We had a bit of a royal tour of the beautiful artwork, but it's beautiful artwork. Very, very lovely. So, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, the Lady Isis, um, Rose of Ascension, and uh, what her role is in this 21st century, and how important it is. And um, sing a couple of songs as we go along, mm -hmm. and um, somewhere in the middle, maybe there'll be some time for question. I've got a couple of prayers. I normally give this talk with a slideshow, but instead I've got a few words written on a piece of paper here, so I'm sure that will go as we go along. I've, uh, I like to write, and I've written... I'll tell you a little bit about myself, first of all. I'm, <coughs> I'm an astrologer, a spiritual healer. Arjuna and I both have the same spiritual teacher, the lady um, Ananda Tarashan. She's the... Uh, the mother founder of the Theosophical Fellowship and Heartflow Worldwide. And um, really through her that I've been introduced on a quite a personal level to the Divine Mothers and um, the Elders, spiritual Elders of the planet and, uh, and the teachings that um, we've followed and I followed are Theosophical by nature. And we live in such exciting times and it's, I've always been interested in um, the where, the why and the how for of uh, what makes individuals tick and what makes the world tick. Um, I've written a couple of little books on the um, on Lady Isis. So this is my latest one. Another one I left in the car, which is quite useless in the car, but there you are. <laughs> this is the last one I've got left. Um, if there are people are interested in the books, please... Um, come and find this afterwards and print your um, email address. And, um, I think I've got three or four of the little tiny Isis book that you have. It's a little prayer book and this is more of a historical who is the Lady Isis for the last 2,000 years and what is her role into the future. Mm. I'm going to start with um, a, a prayer. Uh, so if you just um, like to close your eyes and... Uh, Tune in to the heart of um, Lady Isis and um, say this prayer on behalf of everybody. This is prayer to Isis, World Mother. Isis, thou spirit of resurrection, living in the base of man, spreading light through the hands and forehead of all beings, men and women. Rose of compassion, thou queen of light, Loving all with thy indwelling presence, seeking to comfort as well as to warn of dangerous times fallen upon the earth, affecting all who live there. Isis, thou rose of ascension, indwelling light, protecting thy children with thy all-encompassing embrace. Thousands of arms holding earth in a loving embrace, lifting earth towards a godly union burning earth in holy fire. Mother of Sirius, thou all-knowing, all-wise, who through eyes of fire behold the wonders of nature in its unfolding, glancing through heavy eyelids into our world of strife, praying for endless peace. Will mothers of um, many faces, many names, been there through all these civilizations. 
And Lady Isis comes again to us in the 21st century uh, because she has a new task and a, a new role. And her new task and her new role is associated with helping humanity to lift ourselves and the earth to a higher vibration. And uh, many people, men and women, who have been called to connect with ISIS have had past connections. And uh, so we build upon those past connections, but we lift it to a new vibration. And we have to lift it because um, the planet's in suffering and crisis and uh, there's too much war and too much materialism and too much hatred and negativity and so the world mothers come. And um, Lady Isis is particularly connected to the, um, the ascension process that's happening on Earth at the moment. <coughs> um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the great change, what's happening on Earth. Most people know that we've left the age of Pisces and we've entered into the age of Aquarius. But what that means, um, uh, not everybody's familiar with. And, uh, we thought in the 1960s that the age of Aquarius was just around the corner and it would all be peace, love and brown rice and the wars mm -hmm. would be over and the materialism would be gone and so it would be. And here we are 40 years later, 30 years later and we're still waiting and in fact the crisis <coughs> seems to get worse. And what we need to understand is that the birth of an age doesn't happen in a year or a decade, doesn't even happen in 100 years. The birth of an age takes oh, about 500 years. Yeah. And uh, the, the breakdown of the old um, Piscean age, you could say it was really breaking down around the Second World War. And um, somewhere in the next couple of hundred years, we will have um, the light of the age of Aquarius burning very strongly. And when a new age comes uh, to Earth, we have a new Buddha. And, um, uh, the Buddhas hold the keynote for a couple of thousand year period. And, um, uh, the Buddha Gautama came 500 years before the birth of Lord Jesus and uh, set the scene, if you like, and cleared the path for the age of Pisces where we were meant to find and revere the God external to ourselves. And how well we did that or didn't do that, well, that's... Uh, us to reflect upon. But as we move into the age of Aquarius, in the next turn of the cycle, we're looking for the God within, the God and the Goddess within. And so the, um, the next world teacher will come in about 500 years. This is um, uh, the Buddha Maitreya, the Buddha of loving compassion. And um, the task of the Divine Mothers is to um, be midwives to the birth of an age. And uh, divine mothers come with different faces, different times, and different mothers have different influences at different centuries. And uh, there are two of the divine mothers who are incredibly important as humanity is birthing the age of Aquarius. And we are birthing the age of Aquarius. And this is um, the Lady Portia, the Divine Mother Lady Portia, who holds the, um, the violet ray, and the Divine Mother, mother um, Lady Isis, who holds the blue and the white ray. And the, these two Divine Mothers are, are stepping forward on behalf of all of the World Mothers, bringing in a specific vibration that the planet needs, that the nations need, that you need, that I need, that the banks need, the families need, the whole planet needs the violet ray, the ray of transformation, and the fourth ray, the ray of harmony, beauty and balance. The uh, harmony, beauty and art, as it's often called, the fourth vibration which the Lady Isis holds. So, just like the notes on the guitar, the seventh note and the fourth note are being struck to cleanse and to purify over hundreds of years. And, uh, and this whole process of cleansing and purifying and transitioning from one age to another is um, fraught with danger, just as uh, 
the labour of a woman who's about to give birth is fraught with danger. Will the baby come? Will there be a crisis? Will the mother resist? Will they need a caesarean? You know, all the problems that can possibly happen as, as humanity try to birth a new age. And so the Divine Mother's role is to support and to guide the midwives. And every single soul on earth who is responding to this new age and new vibration then has to find their role and their relationship with the Divine Mothers. And there are Divine Mothers for each frequency of light, the rainbow, but the two who are most important are the Divine Mother, the Lady Portia, who is the, uh, the twin ray of uh, the Lord Count of Saint Germain, who is the king, as we say, of uh, this new age, the Aquarian age. And when I use the word king, I'm simply talking about um, a soul who's, who's moved through the human kingdom and become enlightened and ironed out the personality issues and are vibrating through love. And yet vibrating on the keynote of love through the frequency of violet, and as does the Lady Portia. Yeah. Whereas the, um, the Lady Isis, who's been in what, what I would term pralaya, uh, resting away from earth and humanity since um, her incredible work during the time of Atlantis and Egypt is now surging back in because she is the great mother in charge of the... Uh, well, there's a few things that we need to understand about the Lady Isis is that she holds the, the fourth ray and that the fourth ray is the soul ray or the soul vibration of humanity. So the whole earth... The, the whole of humanity, our, our entire uh, kingdom of souls cannot evolve unless we learn to live in harmony with the animals, the vegetables, the minerals on the one hand and to be able to create a relationship with our, with the angelic kingdom and with the divine kingdom and which, with the extraterrestrial kingdoms on the other hand. And that um, fourth pathway the pathway of harmony and balance is the challenge for each and every one of us. And we simply cannot evolve as a species if we desecrate the earth or keep you know, <coughs> eating the animals or, like, or you know, doing the wrong thing with um, the minerals and all of that. And so the Lady Isis's role is to, as the midwife, to steer us through however long it takes. And for a woman, you know, the pregnancy and the, um, the birthing process, it could be, you know, eight hours, it could be three days, it could be whatever. Uh, and so this birthing process, um, uh, you know, you, you, it, it's <coughs> a useful parallel to think about conception, you know, when a woman first conceives and then 20 weeks later when the child quickens, uh, and uh, the, the, the conception of the age of Aquarius happened somewhere in the middle of the 20th century. And this quickening energy of the, of the soul awakening started somewhere around the 60s, maybe. Yeah. And then the push of the soul to be born started around about the late 90s, you know. And things are hotting up and getting more intense. And uh, we don't have a birth yet. And uh, it's pretty easy to see that we don't have a birth yet because we're meant to be birthing into sacredness. Sacredness on the earth, men will stop killing each other. So that's how we'll know when we have birthed what is known as the Christ consciousness in the cave of the heart. That will be the birth of the next wave of humanity. Um, and that will be somewhere in the next 500 years. So there's a bit of a long protracted birth going on um, on the planet and all of the Divine Mothers are involved in the, the midwifery of this and part of this midwifery of the new humanity uh, are decisions between some souls who, who won't be staying on earth because they don't want to be part of the process or they're not prepared to do the work on themselves within the time frame yeah, because there's a time frame and uh, once we have a new humanity birthed 
who have stopped killing each other, then the ground will be ready and prepared, so, so to speak, for the incarnation of the next Buddha. And this is what the Lady Isis is working towards and what the Lady Portia is working towards and what every single person on the planet is working towards is to cleaning up our individual, our national, our collective act so that we have a pristine earth where the next Buddha can take incarnation. Let's see what the piece of paper says about what I might talk about. What I might, what, what Arjuna might do now, <coughs> I prefer to sit here again so you can be more relaxed with the guitar. Just oh, you should be writing. Yeah, happy, yeah. So I'm happy to swap if you, no, you're happy with it. I think it'll be writing. Um, Arjuna will sing us a, a beautiful song dedicated um, to um, the Lady Portia and her, her work with the Violet Rain. And so I would like you to um, just work with the energy. And so you can do that by visualising violet light spiralling around you or around your family, or around your workplace, anywhere that needs um, transmuting or cleansing. It could be your home, anywhere at all. Just gather the violet energy and um, pass that it be sent through the portion of the violet light angels to where it's needed the most in London. Set us free, Lady Portia. Take us with thee across the violet valleys to him, the great master, your twin, with the master of my. And the freedom flame light and life You bring to us the cosmic fire You nourish us with holy light Lady Portia set up Dolphins come and play your tune Alchemy and transformation Align to light, life and joy Revere the beauty of creation Lady Portia Your silence helps us come to know the truth of universal Balance justice, discrimination. These are your gifts, so welcome. Great Master. 
to your twin Lady Porsche Across the violet valleys to him, the master of transformation. It's emerging as we move into the age of Aquarius, this sound an old pathway coming back to you. So much that needs to be transformed and redeemed. The, um, the work of transformation, it's hard work. You need to understand what you're going to transform, you need to have the right prayers and invocations hang in there when the, the going gets tough to have the right um, therapy or therapist. You could say that the issues that are obstructing humanity's um, progress are our sex power and money. Um, every single one of us is part of the collective, so we have to all work on what's my program with sex, what's my program with money. It's my program with power. You could think of this and the next incarnation as cleansing and purifying incarnations. And if enough of us work on our issues, our individual issues with sexuality, whatever it might be, or money, or power, for this lifetime and next lifetime, then we'll get enough of humanity over the line and uh, we'll end up with the sacred planet. And those souls who are not interested and don't really want to clean up their act around those issues um, won't have the option of coming back to Earth for the age of Aquarius and will move to incarnate on another planet outside our solar system. And the reason for that is that um, the whole solar system is trying to evolve mm -hmm. as well as the Earth trying to evolve. And the Earth's um, Earth's evolution has been held up by the um, bloody-mindedness of humanity who don't want to, to grow. And so because of um, this delay, we're, we're behind time, uh, it's not an option for, for us to take longer. It's simply not an option. We need to have this planet cleansed and purified and operating on a certain keynote um, no later than probably another two or three hundred years. And we simply can't do that with a lot of souls who aren't interested. So therefore we have the um, process of ascension, which the Lady Isis is in charge of, and the millions of ascension angels who work for her, and it's operating in a couple of ways. Uh, for some people who are wanting to transmute and transform and lift their vibration whilst they're still in the body, we get a lot of help. You know? um, through our own therapy, our own healing, whether it's seeing a psychologist, whether it's having spiritual healing, whether it's concert, whatever, but we get a lot of help from the Ascension Angels to lift our vibration. But there are a lot of souls on Earth who are simply ascending, leaving Earth and not coming back. And so we have, you know, the increase of um, global disasters. And we'll have, you know, large amounts of souls losing, losing their life through, uh, you know, a disaster of one sort or another. And that's simply another way the light of ascension is working. The souls who are not choosing to live in the heart and stay on earth are ascending. And, and, and I guess the way I've said it is a bit too simplistic because um, 
it's really only the Board of Karma who can know and understand whether by dying in a natural disaster that might actually be the thing that cleanses enough of one's karma so that you can stay on Earth in the future. So it's too simplistic to say that every soul who's leaving through a natural disaster is not coming back to Earth. It's just that there's a rapid purifying and, and a, a pressure on all of us to choose to, to, to do the hard work, to turn our back on materialism or turn our back on selfishness or to give up you know, ambition or power, all those issues. Yes, and the, the Ascension Angels are there to assist us as well as the, well as the Violet Fire Angels. And the Violet Fire Angels, um, they work for the Lady Portia. And uh, so we can work with the energy of um, uh, Violet Fire to transmute. It could be hatred, it could be grief, it could be uh, resistance, whatever it is that we've got. And we really need to know how to work with light. You know? And... Uh, the other thing about the, the age of Aquarius is that um, it's a collective age. So the, the um, ascended masters, the lords and ladies, spiritual hierarchy of earth and the, the um, angelic kingdom, they work through groups much, much more effectively than they work through individuals. Being involved in group prayer or group dance, or group song, or group ceremony is, is incredibly important in the age of Aquarius because it's not an individual age where we're meant to be doing it on our own. Yeah. And we're not meant to be looking for um, the gods or the goddesses external to ourselves. It's in here. In the way that the face of Father, Mother, God is both um, transcendent and imminent. Transcendent meaning that you know, it exists external to ourselves and imminent meaning that, that the face of Father, Mother, God exists within our own heart. And you're aware of this just some, some, yeah, simply by chanting, for instance, how it lifts the vibration, and how the petals of the heart start to open, and how the energy of the Kundalini begins to move. And uh, the light of Lady Isis manifests in so many different ways. Sometimes people experience it as a um, change or a rise of energy from the solar plexus to the heart chakra, or from the sacral chakra to the throat. Other people might experience the energy of Lady Isis um, in the various forms that she takes, you know, whether it's in her cobra form, serpent form, or the phoenix form, or in whatever other way in her archangelic form. We all experience it differently. One of the strongest experiences I had with the Lady Isis was, um, it was around about 2000. We had a, a temple in uh, my, home, my hometown in, in Dalesford, and we call it the New Himalaya. And uh, my spiritual teacher, the Lady Amanda, was um, she was running a Lady Isis Egyptian meditation. And uh, I observed the Lady Isis come in and descend above my teacher Amanda, and then she spread her wings and they touched either side of the the temple hall, which is <coughs> ten times. 15 times the size of this room, I know. This sort of gorgeous, gorgeous radiatory sort of winged light. <coughs> I've written about my experience in this little book here. <coughs> so I'll find it and I'll read a little bit of it too. It touches us in different ways. Because since, since 2000, you see, um, we're going through what's called the Great Change. And the great change is this, this hundreds of years period between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. And first we had the Great Awakening somewhere around the middle of the 19th century. Then we had the Great Transition when things were speeding up. And we had the Great Ascension. Yeah, and we're having sort of... Everybody talks about it. You can't keep up. Life's going faster. There's not much room between any action you might take and the karma coming to hit you. Yeah. and the sort of massive group ascension of hundreds of thousands of souls with the <coughs> machine or whatever, whatever. Let me see if I can find it up here. The Egyptian 
feeling the ceremony. Oh, it was actually the 4th of July, 2000. Mm -hmm. so here we are, 5th of July now. And of course the reason why the Lady Isis is so important, I'm sure you're aware, the 5th of July is at the heliacal rising of um, Sirius above, above the Nile in ancient times was the, it was, it was sort of like, you know, the calendar message that said all will be well, the Nile will flood, there will be <coughs> prosperity in the land. And uh, you know, Lady Isis has many names, and she is the um, uh, the Queen of Sirius. So yeah, this is this was our um, Fourth of July, two thousand, and, and, and in our in our um, annual year, we celebrate the you know, the equinoxes, the solstices, the certain major spiritual festivals, and one of the major spiritual festivals is the Fourth of July, where we celebrate in the Theosophical tradition um, the Lord Master Ar and the Lady Portia. Uh, because of this incoming seventh ray energy. Our ceremony begins with the presence on the inner planes of the Lady Isis, who is seated enthroned over the presiding female priest. Regally, they form a grail for the heavenly energies to come. Davis of the violet flame gather in preparation for the coming of the king, the master of Davis of all hues settle over certain members of the congregation. Davis of beauty, grace and ceremony and song align the walls of the church awaiting the commencement of the work for the Master Art. Emanations from Master Art pour, pour forth from the presiding male priest. The presence of Ananda Yasodhara is felt as she prepares to work through all of her priests and priestesses in the church. Lady Isis speaks through her priestly vehicle. Isis, Lady of Thunder, Lady of Mountains, I am come. A cosmic miracle has taken place. A path to sacredness has been forged. Earth, holy you shall become. The earth is reborn. Isis, waters of life, I bring life itself and nothing shall be the same again. Rejoice, I am come, earth, my child. Lady Isis, incitement, Encircled by radiant stars, enfolds the congregation in her blue auric emanations, whilst holy healing waters pour forth from the central altar. From on high, the first ray of the fathers transferred through the Syrian Blue Lodge and sent out by the mother to her children in need. A gilded swan queen settles over the female priest, while the shimmering blue energies of the father pour forth to humanity. To the beautiful strains of Holy Mother, Lady Tara Jodi overshadows her beloved and love radiates towards all in attendance. Slowly, beauteously, the Church of Maitreya for all faiths fills with the light of hundreds of golden davis. Fountain blue, Lady Isis, one in soul, form part of the eternal wellspring, which is the blood life of the Christ of one. This hierarchy appears as a many-hued waterfall, which represents their essence and sacrifice. Isis, also known as Sothis, morning star of Egypt, works through all cosmic and divine mothers to nurture life. The mothers of cosmos hold the children of the heart on behalf of the Son and the Father. To our earth the dove returns and the rainbow shares its promise of hope and a future redeemed. The Ark of the Covenants restored to its full glory. Lady Isis, overshadowing her vehicle, sits with a diamond-studded tiara on her head, whilst little cherubs encircle her in radiant blue and gold emanations pour forth from her heart. The earth I take in my hands. With her hands above and below the earth, she blesses and heals earth. Lord Maitreya, fifth and future Buddha of Earth, penetrates the lower levels of Earth which are darkened by humanity's shadow, a weeping sore which threatens to poison the Earth. Humanity, awaken to your plight. Help your brothers and sisters. Many doves of Holy Spirit work to lift the congregation and Earth, while Archangels Uriel and Zadkiel wield the violet flame. The Ark of the Covenants restored to its rightful place within the universe. Shekinkar holds the fate of Earth, the power to resurrect, the power to ascend, 
is placed to rest in the hands of the Queen of Earth. Hierarchy awaits humanity's choices. Slowly, stillness returns to the outer worlds. There's so much grace that we can receive. And even if we don't see the angels, or we may not see the Lady of Isis, you will feel the vibration. You'll feel it in your heart. You'll feel it, feel it as a spiraling energy. You might feel it as a blue or a white cloak around you. Prayer in here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. But um, if you uh, if you say this prayer, you say this prayer, it will uh, help. Ascension prayer written by my teacher, the Lady Amanda. <coughs> and, uh, I'd just like to close your eyes and say this prayer on behalf of everybody. I'll just invoke the heart light of the Lady Isis, the Ascension light, to heal us. Beloved, I am presence. Descend into me and bring me to ascension. Raise my vibrations steadily day by day in the bodies of the personal self. Create atomic substance in all my cells, organs, blood, limbs, muscle and skin. Visualise your immortal self, your I am presence, sending pearly white light into you. Breathing the pearly white light, see it penetrating your toes and your feet. Sending into your body, part by part. Feel how you glow and radiate in your inner and outer bodies. See yourself slowly being absorbed into your I am presence. Continue to breathe the pearly white light in through the soles of the feet. About to enter all physical organs, your bloodstream. Breathe this pearly white light all through the brain, to the front of your brain, back of the brain, centre of the brain. Feel the ascension angel stands behind you. Light that angel into your heart, to your life. This you, raising your physical vibration. Strengthening your physical well-being. Shifting towards the light of your soul and spirit. Light of ascension enters different chambers in your heart chakra and your physical chakra, physical heart. Feel your heart tremble with joy. Interesting process, this sort of birthing of consciousness. It's just like the physical birth where you have this waves of new power come, that's the violet light. And then you have the period where you're not in control and uh, deep surrenders required and that's the ascension light. And eventually there's a baby born of great love and when we get to that point on the planet that we will feel and we will begin to um, be introduced and understand the heart light of the Lady Asada. So when I said there are two of the Divine Mothers, that's not actually true because really there are three. There is the Lady Portia, these early contractions. It's the energy of the Lady Isis when the birth is taken over and one needs to surrender and lift our game. And then there's the birth of the Christ within the cave of the heart. Where we love ourselves enough 
and that's when we will be introduced to and enter deeply into the heart of the Lady Acida. It's a really important process today. How am I going for time, Bernadette? Should I stop talking? No, no idea. That's no. Right. Don't stop talking yet. Yeah. No. Yes, um, and through that whole process of um, uh, birthing, we have the energy of hope. And this is why it's very important um, that, that we know and understand um, the role of the fixed star Sirius and the fixed star Canopus. And these two stars that sit in the um, 15th degree of Cancer, which just happens to be where the sun is today yesterday, fourth, fifth middle degrees of Cancer as a birthing point and, uh, and the, the, the fixed stars, the stars in the heavens actually radiate and transmit vibration and frequencies and uh, Sirius and Canopus radiate and transmit hope. Um, just the way a um, midwife, if you've given birth you'll know they, they keep their eyes fixed on you, they don't let you disappear and they keep looking at you. They say, breathe and can't, don't give up and let's transmit strength and hope. And so if we lose a sense of orientation, then we just need to know to connect in through the fixed stars, Sirius and Canopus, because they are inlet points to the planet for hope. And it might not be for you, it might be for the young people gathering to hear a square. We need to hang in there, in their fight for democracy and their attempt to birth their corner of the world. So anywhere that, uh, and so you can call upon the light of Sirius through the heart of, or the light of Canopus, through the heart of the Lady Isis <coughs> to alleviate world suffering and to send hope. Yeah. The booklet here where Ananda talks about the process of ascension and um, I'll just read it I think. Many people pray for the light, and they seek to live in the light. When the light descends over them, they complain about how their life changes, and how they run into problems and difficulties. For well, they're besieged with effects coming from the light, which they themselves have sought. When people seek the light, they seek God, who is light. God, who is listening to all prayers, and who observes all seekers, for the light welcomes them with loving arms. And what happens? Individual karma is speeded up, and the soul takes an interest in letting the personal self learn more lessons, which will ultimately bring the personal self closer towards unification with its soul and spirit. Spiritual teachers and spiritual books should teach clearly and directly that light brings out evil, and love brings out hatred both within individuals and outside of individuals in the world. Every individual has a shadow self. The world itself has a shadow self. The shadow self in the individual is made up of many lifetimes of negative actions, feelings and thoughts. The same goes for the world. The shadow self reacts negatively to light and tries to reject love. This is why courage, perseverance, strength and patience are virtues and qualities needed in walking in the light. Without developing courage, perseverance, strength and patience, opening to light and love can be most disheartening and frightening. What then can assist the seeker to continue to overcome and live with the constant resistance within his or her lower self, that is the personal self? and to succeed in unifying with his, her soul and eventually spirit. Great determination. An experience within that will hold the vision of the goal intact and not wavering from the chosen path no matter what happens. The spirit of resurrection will assist all of you happily and with fierce protection if necessary. For in the battle of all battles, the one between the personal self the shadow part of it, the soul, the higher self, and the I am presence, the highest self. The battle is a raging one 
which sometimes takes several or many lives to be won by the higher self, selves, the soul and spirit. However, due to a dispensation given to humanity by Logos, that is, Father, Mother, God, celestial beings, masters of wisdom and cosmic beings are able to aid you in this battle. The aid consists of ascension energies, energies that are raising your atomic structure to higher vibrations that are being used in a process which leads to some level of ascension, freedom from karma and liberation of soul taking place. This neutralises the shadow self as it's then infused with beauty and harmony, peace and inner obedience to the laws of God. These virtues or qualities unify with the good personal self and unity occurs within the human being between the personal self and the higher selves. That effect is radiance and more or less perfection of the personal self, which now becomes a vehicle of transfiguration either astrally, astral mentally, or totally. Ascension is the name of this effect. Make sense to you? Mm -hmm. You experienced it in your life? Yeah. The battle? Mm -hmm. yeah. When you call on the light and then other things happen? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have tools to work with it? No. <laughs> Always mantras, mantras, mantras. Yeah. Yeah. Read any problem. <laughs> Sorry? Read. Yeah. 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 I have a couple of CDs that I've very uselessly left in the car five minutes away. Um, not sure what I've got left, but um, mytreatheosophy.org is a website where you can buy um, materials, CDs, um, different materials, spiritual materials to help with the, the journey because we can't do it without the materials. And uh, the Ascension materials, um, Ananda's put them out. She has a, a meditation called the Ascension Meditation. <coughs> she has another meditation into the heart of the Lady White Tara, another one into the heart of the Lord Jesus, another one working with the different flames to purify the aura. Yeah. And. Um, She's a fabulous channel for the divine energies, so her materials are wonderful. And yeah, I have a few of them in the car. Mm -hmm. But I um, think you'd be going to the car. Oh, I have a feeling I heard myself volunteer a while back. a beautiful <laughs> workshop here with Lady Portia. Yes. Who was very specific that the colour of the violet, was a silver violet flame. Oh, yes. Not just violet in the way St. Germain goes through violet. Well, it's More different, the, yes. The feminine, she said the higher feminine, the silver violet. It's a silver all the way through it. The really deep violet that comes through with the Lord Count St. Germain is more for planetary issues. Mm -hmm. And the paler lilacs of the spectrum, mm -hmm. more the Lady Portia, when you add silver to it, then it strengthens the immune system and strengthens, strengthens the physicality. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been working with. Yeah. So far. Yeah. She gave us um, a course, which we could do again next year if anyone's interested. She gave us a two-day course in basic psychism from her perspective, using colour and colour therapy and using all the colours like for your immune system mm -hmm. to increase your psychism. Mm. All sorts of things. Mm. Very interesting lady master, lady Portia. Yeah, working with the different flames and the different frequencies and different lady marshes, it's the, it's the science of light. Mm. It's the science of the soul, science of light. And, uh, the science of the unseen until you can see. Yes, yeah, that's right. Mm. It's okay. Yes, does anybody have any questions, things you want to ask about? I don't know. Anything at all that I've said that you don't understand or you disagree with? Or? How do we know that this transitional stage will take us 500 years? How do we know that? Mm -hmm. um, well, my teacher Ananda has said that and uh, as an astrologer I looked at that number mm -hmm. and realised that it fits very well in the changing of a zodiacal sign. Yeah. It's, it's 
hard to explain, but um, 2,150 something years is um, the age of a of the zodiacal age, and then there's 2,500 years, which is what we call a ray age. And when you divide, um, and because there are seven frequencies that operate through an age, then it's about 340 years for each, for one seventh, so to speak. And uh, astrologers and other people disagree as to as to when exactly the age of Aquarius started. Some people say it was in the 1960s. Mm. I think it was 2000. Others say it's 20 years to come. But there's not much differentiation within 100 years of where it's come. And then because we have these seven frequencies of light, and the first frequency is the clearing up of the the past and the planting the seeds for the new age, and that's roughly 345 years. Mm -hmm. Then count 345 years on from either the 1960s or 2000, and you'll end up with you know, a few hundred years down the track. And that's, that's when the first, the first phase of the, that, that, of the Aquarian Age um, is finished. And then the second phase is the... It's a bit like, um, as above, so below. Um, when, when, some, when a woman's pregnant, it takes 12 weeks before the, the, um, the fetus is embedded. Yeah? And that embedding into... Um, the new age will happen about 350 years after the beginning of the age of Christ, and from then, then the, the energy is right for the birth. So my, um, when I put my astrologer's hat on, I go, oh yes, okay, it's about the time frame. And then when I listen to the teachings of the Lady Ananda, and she was saying 500 years for the birth of the next Buddha, and she's been saying that since 1970. She kept using the same number. In about 500 years, 500 years. And she was saying for 40 years, so it's kind of like, hey, you know, it's around about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Um, sex, power, money. Power and money I understand quite well. The sex bit, I'm kind of not, yeah, I don't quite... Well, the, the issues vary, you know? Some people who've had lots of monastic lifetimes are quite wound up on, on sex and it's like, well, how can you have sex and be in a spiritual life? You know, so it could be an issue of too much abstinence mm-hmm. or for somebody else it could be an issue of too much overindulging. You know, I think, I think the, the, the tenets of, of the Buddha really are do no harm. Yeah. So do no harm to yourself or somebody else through sexuality. So, for instance, um, I can only speak about myself, if I've got difficult past incarnations from way back, that are involving sex or sexual abuse, then I need to clear that up if it's affecting me, and affecting the way I relate. Yeah? I may not have had any abuse this lifetime, but I'm carrying somewhere in my shadow mm. an old issue to do with the harm between men and women. So that's my part of the planetary shadow around sex. You know, my sexual relationships might be fine, but I've got this old issue, you know, to do with, you know, Hatred, hatred around sexuality, hatred around harm. And I've experienced lifetimes on both sides of the fence where I've been persecuted or where I've been a rapist or whatever. I'm not talking metaphorically here, I'm talking from my own healing. And uh, I've had to deal with those issues. We were talking earlier this evening about astrology and uh, I've got Saturn in Scorpio. So, you know, I've got karma to do with the cleansing of issues around infancy and sexuality. And, you know, we are the collective. There's no point sitting there holding them now saying, oh, my sex is fine and, you know, everyone's with a problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I wouldn't know what your issues are, but it's, it's useful to say, well, anything that I'm carrying in the conscious or in the subconscious, it's good to try and dig it up. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for many women, those issues will come up around pregnancy or birth or... In my case, you know, um, I had very, very deep healing around old sexual issues when I had an abortion. Just out came this torrent of absolute hatred mm. for my husband and all men in particular. For all men, you know, it's like, where did that come from? Just, mm-hmm. you know? So, has had five children. 
That's, that's right. a badge of honour these days. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking the same words. <laughs> I don't have children, and, and not, uh, not for no reason either. You know, I sat in this talk, and I've got heal issues to do with creativity, motherhood, da 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 So it's just a useful thing to reflect. Based on what you were saying, um, past lives. Past you, lives. Based on what you're saying, are you saying that aspects of our past lives carry forward? You know? Absolutely. Are you serious? Physically in our DNA. Yeah. If you think physically, your ancestors create your DNA for who you are now in your physical body. The same happens on all your body levels. So your emotional body, your spiritual body, your intellectual body, all the different elements of you all get carried forward somehow into who you are now. So you carry the memory. Not Otherwise we have to learn everything again. Not on a conscious level. You see, if, if I remembered every one of my past lives, I'd, I'd, be, walking, I'd be walking psychosis. Mm -hmm. eh? But if something happens in your life, like for instance, I decide I'm having an abortion, and I've got issues with abortion and men and hatred, and then that, that, that event in my life took the lid off of a past life. So timing appropriate, you know? And, and when deep, powerful feelings or things that we don't know where they come from rock it out like that, you know, like I was not very nice to my, you know. Um, they come from somewhere and they, they're coming because they need healing. Mm. So when something like that happens, go to healer and say, I don't know where this came from, but I need some help so it can keep moving up and out. And sometimes it's useful to know where it came from. And other times we work with the mantras, we work with the violet fire, we work with prayer. For instance, um, uh, the Lady Magdalene is a particularly useful lady master to call upon if you're trying to heal issues between you know, the male-female aspects of yourself. Because Lady Magdalene, that's her business. That's her, that's her core business, is the stuff between men and women. You know, that's what she's on about. Whereas the Lady Isis is there for the ascension of the planet. So how do you address and, her? How do you address her? Um, mm -hmm. Let's try this particular mantra. Um, Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. Would you like to say it with me? Yeah. Magdalene, 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 Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Magdalene Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. Last time. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Earth. Magdalene, Magdalene, Mother of Light. Jesus, Jesus, Light of the World. The healing energy of the Lady Magdalene is deep red, like the colour of menstrual blood. Healing is all about um, a particular um, there's a particular essential oil. His name I can't quite remember. It. Spike nard. Spike spike nard. Spike nard is the um, the the oil that the Lady Magdalene used to anoint the feet of the Lord Jesus. And of course, we've had two thousand years worth of heresy, which is called whore. Whereas in fact, she's the wife of the Lord Jesus and mother of the children and uh, the grave. And and so, the Lady Magdalene has been restituted to her rightful place since about two thousand. Mm. And not least of which through 
Dan Brown. God bless his soul. It's mm. cotton socks. Yeah. All those wonderful and movies. Exactly. And I don't give a damn if they think it's fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is that the, the heresy of the church yeah. and the lie against the Lady Magdalene has been overturned and overthrown. And you've only got to, I mean, I spent a fortnight visiting the Magdalene sites in the south of France a couple of mm. years ago. And she's revered. Mm. Mm. You know, go to and the cave where she lived for 33 years and go to, go to Saint-Marie de la Meur on the coast um, where there's a huge basilica where gypsies come from all over Europe twice a year mm. to celebrate the light of the Lady Magdalene. 22nd of July. Twice a year. Yes, yeah, I was there in... Um, yes, yeah, the third weekend of... Also September, I think. They have two, two a year. Wonderful, wonderful um, celebration. About 2,000 people in this most enormous basilica. I've never seen anything like it in my life. The, um, the royal gypsies, I call them the royal gypsies, um, uh, who hold the memory of Lady Magdalene landing on the coast in France and working in absolute concert uh, with, with the Roman Catholic Church. And they've been doing this for 2,000 years. Mm. They have a dozen white horses lined up and they completely reenact the landing. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's always here, yes. And you can speak through if you like. Well, I think that... Um, to end the night. Yeah. The, the, the blessings, the blessings of um, um, the Lady Asadara, um, the Lady Magdalene and um, the Lady Isis will come through the last song that Arjuna will sing for us. And this is a beautiful song that uh, we've been travelling to the sacred sites, um, uh, following the serpent path, following the Earth's Kundalini um, uh, as part of our work because we were involved in earth healing. And uh, we received enormous blessings um, when we were in Iceland. We went to um, Snaefels Nest Peninsula very, very sacred um, area of Iceland. And, uh, out of our journey there came this wonderful song, and it's a blessing song. And we called it the Land of Isis. And um, the blessings of this song, um, well, let's just send them in to London. And, uh, so if you would just allow the blessing energy of this song to... Um, go through you and out into the world. That would be good. Mm. And we'll sing it until it feels like stopping. <laughs> and that would be very nice. Land of my blood, 
of Isis lights This land I bless for thee This heart, this light One heart, one light Returned again to thee This land, my heart This land, my soul This land, I bless for thee From deeper space This land I bless for thee This heart, this light One heart, one light This earth I bless for thee This heart, this light One heart, one light soul's desire, land of my calls, holy fire, land of my blood, of Isis light, this land I This land I bless for thee This heart, this light One heart, one light This earth I bless for thee This heart, this light This land I bless for thee This land I bless for thee This land I bless for thee This land I
we're going to finish with three lines. We'll stand. Oh.